All right, this is gonna be educational, I hope. <laughs>as you know, I've got the Laurel Highland 70.5 mile trail race this weekend in just a couple of days, and I kind of want to go over what I do to prepare my crew. Uh, this isn't my tips for a crew video. I've got another one about 10 tips for crewing an ultra marathon. Top right corner, you can take a look at that. Uh, this is going to be specifically on something that you as a runner and what I do to help ensure my crew is uh, where I need them to be and ready and set up for success. So let's get straight into it. Okay, my binder. I love having a good binder. I think it's key on the front. I just, you know, cool little picture, Laurel Highlands Ultra. Uh, but then right here, this is the cutoff chart that the race put out. So this is nothing that I created, but it just simply lists start time uh, based off of the last starting time because this is there are doing waves. Uh, so it has the 6 a.m. start where I'm actually starting is at uh, 5.30. But then we've got all the aid stations listed, cutoffs for each aid station, whether or not drop bags, crew, pacer allowed, all the way down to the finish. So that's just something quick, quick reference for my crew to look at and see if I'm still, you know, meeting cutoffs, which hopefully I should be. And if we dive inside the binder, one thing I do for myself, just real quick, I laminate this exact same card. I fold it over and laminate it so I can stick this in my vest and have all those cutoff times with me. So I know exactly if I'm on pace. But most importantly for the crew, you know, these races are, you know, mountainous races. Sometimes you're off in state forests, state parks, national forests, national parks, game lands, or wherever you may be. There may not be cell service. So I always like to print out directions from the start to each aid station, then to the finish. Uh, this race, you know, put out a good document on uh, kind of directions to each one, like some written directions and maps of parking areas. So I took that, combined it with my uh, Google map directions that I have created this binder just in case there's no cell service so if we take a look here this is driving directions to the checkpoints and aid stations this is to aid station one and this part here came directly came directly from the race themselves you know i didn't do this uh, but it just tells you, you know you were left out of the parking lot you know drive this way blah 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 it tells you where to park uh, but then i did print the google maps for this is from the start to aid station one as it says there uh, but basically if they some reason there is no cell service. My wife, my crew, now has directions, knows how long it should take them to get there, and can plan accordingly to make sure they're where I need them to be. On top of this, I also then took the link to this specific direction set and emailed it to my wife and labeled it start to aid station one. So now she has that. If there is cell phone service, she can pull up her email, click on it, go straight into the directions, no issue. And I did this for every single one. So we've got, this is a parking area here, and if we turn, we've got aid station one to aid station two directions. She has an email for this one too, all the way down to, you know, the finish. We got it all. So she should be set up there. Uh, that way, like I said, you just want to plan for everything. If there's no service, you don't want your crew to not be there because they're lost. Set them up for success so that you can set yourself up for success. And then on top of that, back here, I printed out the actual uh, race packet that the race provided. This just goes over some of the COVID guidelines, you know, bib assignments, start times, time, uh, important times for the race, you know, shuttles, if there is a shuttle for the race, uh, kind of how the course works, age stations, you know, drop bags. It's got that chart in here as well for the cutoffs. That's the meat of the binder. That's, you know, something I give to my wife for pretty much any ultra I do. That's a point to point where she's going to be driving to and from different aid stations. Uh, I just feel it helps me feel comfortable, helps her feel comfortable so she knows where she's going uh, and she's not, you know, lost somewhere. And I don't have to worry about her. So big tip, give it a shot. I think you'll like it. Another cool thing I want to talk about, if you haven't heard it already or if you haven't used it, is called ultrapacer.com. So this is a website run, uh, I'm not sure who runs it, but uh, basically they create a lot of ultra courses. They take the GPX files, create a big, uh, they take the GPX file, they create a course, input aid stations. You can then go in and input all your, uh, your, start, time, your start time data, your desired pace that you want to, uh, or your, your desired time that you want to complete the race, uh, you know, your pace should drift if you think you're going to be slowing down as the race progresses, which you will. Uh, all those cool things and generate a pace plan. So I did that for this race. 
This Laurel Highlands race was not created yet in Ultra Pacer, so I uploaded the GPX route from trailrunproject.com uh, and then input the aid stations from the Laurel Highlands website, created the course, uh, and now I can create a pace plan, which is really helpful. And to go along with that, in the binder, I have got in the back here, printed off the elevation profile. And the cool thing here, if you see, uh, it's kind of shaded dark on the side here. That's to indicate that it's going to be dark then, and I'll need a headlamp for the last five-ish miles. So, kind of helpful. Pretty neat. But then to go along with that too, on the back of the binder, I have my pacing plan. Uh, so basically here I've got a 17-hour pacing plan for this race and a 16-hour plan. Uh, and then if it's over 17 hours, then it's, you know, <laughs> nothing's going to plan and, uh, you know, adjust. It's going to be slower. But basically, if you take a look, it's got aid station one, aid station two, all the way down to the finish. Uh, but it's got total elevation gain, distance, uh, what pace I should be on for that segment, elapsed time, arrival at the aid station. So again, just something super helpful to cr for a crew to look at to see exactly you know, what time to expect you at the aid station. But now I'm actually gonna show you kind of how to do this on ultrapacer.com. So let's head to the computer and take a look at this. So this is ultrapacer.com. As you can see, it's a Laurel Highland 70.5 miler. I've got all the aid stations input here. You can click on it and it zooms into the segment. You can see it on here in the little map in the bottom. It zooms over there, it's pretty cool. You can do it for all of those, but you can also look at the splits. So for each mile, what the elevation gain is, what the descent is, the percent grade average. So really helpful in kind of planning your pace. Waypoints, again, is just the aid stations, details. This is the actual data for the specific race day. It shows you sunrise, sunset times, dusk, uh, which is pretty cool. So let's go back to the segments page and we're gonna create a pace plan. Hit the plus button, name it. Let's do Stevens 17 hour pace. We have it set by elapsed time. You can change it as well. And for me, I'm gonna put in, let's just say 17 hours. Aid station delay. So this is how long you're gonna spend at the aid stations. I'm gonna put three minutes. I like to be quick. You can use the course time. Mine is 5.30, so I'll leave it. Or if you hit custom start, you can input your own start time. I'm gonna apply a pace drift of 10% meaning my pace is going to slow down by 10%, basically, as the race progresses. If it's going to be hot, you can apply a heat base fa a heat factor, which is pretty cool too. But I'm going to leave that alone and click Save. It'll generate the plan. And here we go. This is my pace plan. As you can see over here on the left, this little graph has changed a little bit. We've got a slight gray shading on the far left. And on the right, we've got more gray. And what that means is basically that's going to be dark. So need a headlamp. So I'm going to plan to pick up my headlamp uh, probably at aid station six just to be safe. So you see here, I'll be at aid station six at roughly 5.27 p.m. And the next aid station, I'd be there at 8.06. So I probably want my, my headlamp before that. So that's why I'm going to pick it up here at aid station six. But again, this tells you, you know, you've got uh, lapse time, pace on this segment here, arrival at the next aid station or at this aid station. Uh, so very helpful. If you go to the splits, this just again breaks it down based off of your start time. So it tells me exactly when I should be where. Very helpful. Details, again, this gives you some more details now that you've input your start time and your desired finish. It tells you your average pace, the overall pace, uh, which is all just pretty cool. Eight aid station stops for with three minutes at each is 24 minutes. So now if you want to print something like this and see it, you just go to options. Click Print Segments Table, prints a PDF, and you can open it up right here. Now you can print this, put it in your binder, or wherever you want to put that. You can also download a GPX of this. You can print the profile chart, which is the elevation profile, if you want to use that too. And you can also put that in your little binder. So that's it. If you want to edit it, click the little edit button, change your time to 16 hours or 20 hours or whatever you're doing. You can adjust your pace drift. Uh, you know, play around with it, see how it works for you. All right, so I hope that was helpful, educational, you learned something. Uh, if you did, please give the video a like, thumbs up, really does help the video out a lot, and I would really appreciate it. 
And if you're new, maybe click subscribe. That would also be really cool and help the channel continue to grow. And also you will see future videos like this and uh, maybe learn a thing or two. That'd be really cool. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you want to take a look at that 10 tips for crewing an ultra marathon video that I put together, it's going to be right over here on the left side of your screen. You can take a look at that. And then over here will be some trail running videos you can see also. Enjoy some beautiful scenery. So thanks for watching. Appreciate you all. And I'll see you on the next one.